Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. A couple of weeks ago I went over the Nexion text element. In this one I'm going to go over the scrolling text element. I'll put a link in the description to the old one, because in this one I'm just going to go over the differences between the two. They're pretty similar other than the fact that the text can move. And then based upon that movement, you can do things with timing. And that's what I'll focus on in this video. For this one, I'm still using the Nexion Editor version 1.65.1. And similar to the text box, the scrolling text box has the attributes on the right. And the ones that are in green when you look in the IDE, you can adjust when the program's running. You can tie them to button clicks and things like that so that you can make it, like in this case, you can make it so it can drag or you can change the visibility on it. I've added a regular text box down here. And then I have the scrolling one in blue. And one difference between the two is the type. If you were to add more scrolling text box, they would all have the same type of 55. Whereas a regular text box has the type of 116. And if you added more of those, they'd be 116. And when you originally add the, the boxes or any element, it gives it an object name. But you can adjust that name. But in this case, the text box gets T0, and the scrolling box gets G0. If you add in another one, it would be G1, G2, G3. But like I said, they would all have the same type. It's these four attributes down here, the DIR, the DIS, the TIM, and the EN, that are really the difference between the scrolling and the regular text. For the direction, you have four different choices you can make, left to right, right to left, up to down, and down to up. And they pertain to, or they relate to these numbers, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if you assign it in the coding, you would use those. And we're going to have an example with that. I'm going to add a button. Actually, it's a dual state button. And then I've already added a timer down here. I have the timer set to go every 400 milliseconds, but I'm going to change that to its fastest. So every 50 milliseconds, we're going to execute a code. And in this case, we're going to execute this code. We're going to set the GO, or that scrolling direction, equal to the value that the BT0 is. And the value of BT0 is either going to be a 0 or 1. So we're either going to see it scroll left to right or right to left. And for the button, we're going to start it equal to 1. And you can see that it's scrolling from the right side to the left side. But when I push this button, it'll switch and go the other direction. Now this distance and this timing, they're related, but they are two different things. They're both in milliseconds. What happens when you scroll is that this new text, I didn't change the text, I left it to new text. I probably should have it say cheap controls. But it jumps. It moves a certain amount of distance every time. And that distance is how far that it would move in milliseconds for every jump. So in this case, we have the distance set to 4, and that 4 is in milliseconds. You can go from 2 to 50. However fast this can move in 4 milliseconds, that's how far the jump is. I'm going to change this to 250 milliseconds, and we'll get to the timing next, but that's how often it will jump. And I'm going to show you this when it's set at 4. And you can see that it's moving across in jumps. And you can see it kind of jerk over to the side. And what that is, is it's jumping whatever the movement would be if you could set the timing to 4 milliseconds. I'm going to change it now. So now I'm going to change this distance to 50. So now every 250 milliseconds, it's going to jump whatever distance it would have traveled in 50 milliseconds. 
So you can see it's moving much faster now, but it's not really moving much faster. It's the same timing we have. We have it every 250 milliseconds. We just have it jumping however far it would travel as if it were every 50 milliseconds. If it's easier, you can think of this as this distance as pixels. So it's going to jump 2 pixels or 50 pixels, and it's going to be do it every 250 milliseconds. So the higher the distance and the lower the timing in, or TIM is, the faster it will move. Because if I were to set this up higher to every second and set this at its minimum, you'll see that it'll move very slowly. And you can see that it's moving in real slow. And I have it set to the timing to be every second, and I have this display to be at this lower number. So I'm going to set this display, or this distance, to 50, and I'll show you again, and it'll jump faster so it'll look like it's moving faster. And you can see it's, it's jumping a longer distance so it looks like it's going faster. And now I'm going to lower this down to its smallest, and I'll leave that at 50, and it'll look like it's flying across the screen. And see, you can't hardly even read it. And in this case, I'm going to leave the timing at its lowest, and I'm going to set this to its lowest, and it'll look like it's slowing down. And you can see, so every 80 milliseconds, it's jumping two to the left. If I change this, then it goes to the right. So you just play with these two values and you get the scroll that you think is best. And the last attribute that's different from the text box is this enable. The enable um, allows the text to go when to move at all. So we're going to change the timer to a different code. We're going to set the code for the timer now to set the enable bit for the scroll box to be whatever the value is here. So when we first boot it up or when we first start the um, debug, it'll be set to one, because I have that value set to one, and so the text will be moving, and then when I hit the button, it'll stop. You can see that it's moving. I click the button and stop. I start it up again and it moves. So if you had two buttons, you could control direction. Actually, if you had three buttons, you could maybe control up and down, side to side, and stop and go. There is one more difference in here, and it's the fact that you can't have a password. On this text box, in this text box, you have this PW, which is either character or password, and it's right underneath this Y Sen. If I go to this one and I see the Y Sen, it's not there. So you can't make this a password field. And that kind of makes sense because it's more of a notification type of a box. I plan on having a video on each one of these elements that you can put on the display. And then over at the Cheap Controls website, I'm going to have a page dedicated to the elements and a page dedicated to the attributes. So you could go there and you could find the element you want, and then there'll be a link to the video and the blog post or in some case, there might be two or three videos that go over that or have that element in some sort of a detail. And hopefully that will help you locate certain information on certain things. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.